could you give me an example of what orthopathos might be? Yeah. Because I mean, it seems like everybody like feels different from one minute to the next. How yeah, do we yeah. define? Yeah. Well, it? let's let's go. Let's just take an example of all of them. Okay. Let's just say. Jesus is Lord. Let's just take that. That's, that's probably the most basic Christian commitment we have or basic theological notion we have. And if we say that Jesus is Lord, orthodoxy means we, we know what that means. Mm -hmm. We know, for example, that it means he is the controller of everything, that he is the, he's not a creature, but he's the creator himself. So the Lordship of Christ would mean that we have the right kinds of ideas associated with that unlike, say, Jehovah's Witnesses. When they say Jesus is Lord, and they do, what they mean by that is that he's the biggest and the best of all the creatures, okay? So that would be an, an unorthodox way of thinking about Jesus, okay? So there's orthodoxy, you think about him. Now, the practice, the practice, the orthopraxis of that statement, Jesus is Lord, is that you do things with your body that demonstrate that you believe in it, okay? Like, um, you don't kill people or things like you share your faith with people, or you seek to make Christ the Lord of your life um, in your behavior. So you try to treat people better, you try to obey the Bible, you do those kinds of things in outward ways with your body. Mm -hmm. Orthopathos is a little bit different than that. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can believe the right things about Jesus and you can do the right things about the Lordship of Jesus in some ways, mm -hmm. okay, physically, without ever really touching the attitude or the, the sentiment or the affect or the emotions. And to know that Jesus is Lord in, a, in the fuller sense of that expression means that you'll also be orthopathetic. That is not pathetic in the way we often use the word meaning miserable or aren't we sorry for this person, but thinking, doing, and then feeling the fact that Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. So when you and I think about the Lordship of Christ, it ought not just cause us to think the right doctrines. It ought not just cause us to do certain things with our bodies, but it should also cause us feelings of awe and reverence mm -hmm. and adoration, uh, feelings of um, repentance and sorrow over sin, uh, affection for Jesus, love for him. Um, these are the kinds of things that come from the, a true knowledge, a fuller knowledge of Jesus as Lord. Mm -hmm. And the same kind of schema can be applied to every single theological truth um, because people just tend to think theologians are dry and cold. And the reason they think that is because theologians, by and large, that is professional ones, the ones that write the books, they do tend, the more academic they are, to focus more on the orthodoxy and leave the others. Yeah. Or if they're super practical, they'll move down into the orthopraxis. But very seldom do you hear people talking explicitly about orthopathos. And that's what we are, we're saying in this lesson is one of the distinctive and specific goals of Christian theology.